Hello, everyone. Welcome to TSAM Digital. My name is Anar, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Tanya CJ, the CEO and founder of Orenda Software Solutions, a SIX company. Welcome, Tanya. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, so before we get started on our conversation, Tanya, would you like to say a couple of words about yourself and about your company? Sure. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I started actually as a journalist for many years, and then I was on a very large environmental remediation project in Canada, uh, and then started around in 2015, started to build out um, a wonderful technology, uh, as well as build out a great team. And uh, a year ago, uh, we were acquired by SIX, uh, the Swiss International Exchange, and became part of their family. Uh, and now we are expanding our, our technology, our team, and our universe. That's amazing. Congratulations on, on such a great uh, journey. It's, it's really fascinating. And I can't wait to, to get, you know, um, deeper into conversation. Um, so today we actually wanted to speak about ESG and about alternative data. So to kick things off, um, can I ask you, Tanya, what are the benefits of using alternative data in relation to ESG? Hmm. So I would say getting data from uh, non-traditional sources, which is alternative data. Uh, we all know that they can give you a market edge. Uh, many of us are looking for that when it comes to an investment. But it's so much more than that. Um, I keep saying, uh, including two sides of an ESG disclosure, the company side as well as the society side, is a more forward-looking approach to ESG. Um, if I was to use an analogy, uh, relying solely on company disclosures would be like, living in a house without any windows. Um, you have no idea what is happening outside your doors. So using alternative data, um, like social media, is the same as living in a house with you know, big windows. Um, you can see the changes. You can see what is happening around the world. Um, you can see the impact. Uh, you can prepare for what is coming. <laughs> and as an investor, um, you know, I would want those big windows in my own house. Um, I want alternative data working hard uh, to bring me those insights. And with ESG pivoting more toward uh, forward-looking disclosures and a more holistic view on company impact, um, alternative data should be a priority for both the issuer and, and the investor. That is such an interesting and unique view and take on it. Um, can I ask also, what are some of the challenges in using alternative data? Um, I would say that the challenge in using this data would be the same as using traditional data. Um, it doesn't answer all of the questions all of the time. So you have to decide uh, what questions you wanted to answer um, to find the data that best does that and allows, you know, allow it to do the heavy lifting for you. So one of the questions could be what companies are being outed today for greenwashing? You know, that's very common. So what companies and industries are prone to ESG reputational risks? Um, which companies have publicly announced really aggressive uh, climate targets, but have made very few changes um, that's going to help them meet that target in time. So today's investors, they need that information when optimizing their portfolios. Uh, without it, they are putting their own reputations at risk with their with their customers, as well as the reputation of their firm. So the challenge is deciding what is important to you and finding the data that best supports and answering those questions. And then find the companies and the technology that can deliver that seamlessly into your own ecosystem. So I would also say that getting data after the fact doesn't give you the market edge or protect you from making a bad investment decision. So you really have to think about that as well. Um, having an alternative data plan that supports your investment needs when you need it, that's the best way to overcome that challenge. Mm, very, very interesting. And actually, I was thinking you mentioned disclosure. So I wanted to ask, what do you expect to come out of the SEC in relation to climate-related related disclosure? And what impact will this have? So I actually read the proposed rule from the SEC. Um, it was good reading. Um, and I believe it does tackle a lot of investor concerns when it comes to ESG. Uh, what I would say is that the pivot to more forward-looking climate-related impacts and the tie back um, to financial materiality, it opens the doors uh, for companies like ours, for sure, and to have an important role in supporting both the issuer and the investor. So for the issuer to be able to assess their own value chain, both upstream and downstream, is, is really important. Um, identifying changes in customer investor prefer preferences that's going to have an impact on their company is really, really important. 
um, to be able to assess potential risks um, and for their board to be able to uh, be aware of those and to be um, alerted to those, I think is really, really important. Um, and to understand what potential impacts will result from you know, uh, M&A activities, because once you acquire a company, you assume their, their liabilities as well. And this, this includes climate risk and how that will impact um, overall their access to capital, which is you know, what drives companies in, in a lot of ways. Um, it's a serious consideration now. It's not just marketing anymore. And then it's for the investor, they need data that alerts them to you know, risk of default um, or any kind of downturn. And more than that, um, depending on their investment strategies, they want to be able to compare and evaluate one investment risk to another. So they also want to ensure that you know, they have diversified portfolios. They want to minimize you know, concentrated risks. They need to be able to assess their exposure um, of risk at a granular level now. They also need to be alerted of changes that impact them, such as reputational risk when a company is about to miss a target. So all those things they need to be able to understand, to be able to assess, to be able to correlate, and to be able to make really good, strong investment decisions. So the impact is better protection for the investor. The outcome will be that, and this is the most important part, that our combined wealth will definitely go toward those companies that are transitioning in the most, I, I would say, the, the most authentic way. So how can the data be used alongside traditional ESG scores and which view is right if the data is conflicting? Hmm. I would say that this goes back um, to living in a home without any windows. So if the company disclosure is in conflict with the community data, um, as an investor, I would say that my role would be to determine why that is the case. So we, in a clothing manufacturer example that we have on our website, um, the traditional ESG rating company came out with a double A for the company. However, in our data, it was clear to see that the company was being outed for modern day slavery. So that is information investor would have to be able to see, and they would be able to see if the two data sets live side by side. So the drop in ESG score from the community side and an increased rating from the company side disclosure would be, they would be able to see that. It's not that the traditional ESG rating was wrong. It was using data delivered to it by the company or modeled based on industry norms. And it was likely from an annual report where we focus is on the other side of the disclosure. And as we know, uh, the community reports on companies ESG activities every single day. So that's, that's, that's why we focus on that. But I would say neither one is incorrect. It's just, it's timing and it's uh, being aware of what a company's ESG score and their story is every single day. Thank you so much, Tanya, for this overview. It's, it's really fascinating. And um, I, I just wanted to mention for the asset managers who want to join us and, and hear more about this topic in person, you will be participating in the um, TSAM London event. That's going to be on the 16th of June in London. And you're going to be part of the panel on keeping up with ESG data demands. Um, so I really hope that our viewers will be able to join us in person and meet you and hear from you and maybe ask some questions. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you.